Ahoy mateys! Welcome to the AV pay-per-view series and today we're going to be covering James Cameron's Aliens <clears throat> made in a, a, a 18, not 18, fuck, 1986. Uh, we're going to be covering the special edition version of this film which is like a director's cut. Um, it has a lot more uh, added, has a lot more bits added in and it fleshes out some character stuff. So let's get started. Uh, taking place 57 years from the previous film. So Gorn, uh, Ripley's character was lost in space pretty much, and she was salvaged. I mean, she got lost so far in space that she was off the grid until like, a salvage team found her in deep space or whatever. Anyway, they find her. She finds out that uh, she was gone for 57 years, and we learn that Ripley had a daughter. And um, we also learn that her daughter had died Had died two years before Ripley was found at uh, the age of 60-something. And, of course, Ripley, you know, finds this out, and she's just, you know, she's crestfallen, you know, because, like, she pretty much missed her, her whole daughter's life. And this ties in beautifully to the whole Newt storyline, to Newt's character later on in the film, because Ripley and Newt developed this mother, this surrogate mother-daughter relationship in... We also and you and you find out that one that Ripley would go to Helen back to protect this kid, save this child because she sees her as the daughter that she lost and it's just like and she and she doesn't want to lose her again. So you know that's and the relationship between Newt and Ripley is beautifully done, beautifully written. James Cameron really on point with making you care about. That relationship to the point where you to the point where you get to the end, and we see Newt captured by the aliens. You're like, oh god, I hope they don't. I hope Newt survives this. I hope Ripley kicks ass, and eventually she does. But the, but the, the foundation of this, the backbone of this movie is Ripley and Newt. That relationship carries this movie pretty much. <clears throat> excuse me, pretty much from the time they meet to the time this film ends. So it's very important that that backbone was firmly established then we get on to the other characters uh the grunts because this this is what were the first alien movies like a horror movie this is more like an action war movie and a really really fun one at that because like the first like the first one you get fun characters in this one you got bill paxton playing hudson who's one of my favorite characters in this movie hudson is awesome he has so many quotable lines it is not even funny from like game over, man, it's game over. To we're in some deep shit now, man. Well, we're in the shit now, man. It was like Bill Paxton gets the gold in the world for lines because every scene he's in, he just steals it. Because he's I love Bill Paxton too. I I think Bill Paxton's very underrated. I know he gets a lot of hate, but I personally like him. And another thing I like about Bill is that he can go from being this cocky, arrogant badass. To a wimpy, whiny little bitch, to just straight up badass, gonna protect, gonna help protect my teammates, and he does it, and it's like, and he does it, it switches, it switches, it's great. So Hudson, perfect. Then you got Hicks, played by Michael Bean. In my in my opinion, Michael Bean was one of those actors that never really got a fair shake in his career because he could have been an awesome action star. Just watch Terminator. He's played Kyle Reese, and he was great, and he's good in this too because. After the initial attack of the aliens, pretty much have the team is wiped out. Uh, Michael Bean's character Hicks pretty much takes the role as the leader of the grunts, and Michael Bean is really good at playing that uh, that top the top of the chain of the command because like he's so like he doesn't break. To me, he doesn't break. Like he's very he's always calm. He always has a situation calm. He knows what he's doing, and he makes sure that everyone else does their job the right way. And it does it and does everything as fast as possible. And Michael Bean's character does that. And then you got Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser is in this movie. He plays Burke. He plays this uh, comes across as a nice guy, but is really a sleazy scumbag because he was willing to kill both Ripley and Newt just to bring the embryo, the alien embryo, back to uh, Earth. So he's pretty much like a scumbag. So he's like every alien movie has that scumbag character that wants to 
weaponize the alien for some stupid ass reason, like you control it. But he played it well too. And then you got Vasquez and you got Drake. And I like Vasquez and Drake. Uh, Vas- Vasquez, played by Jeanette Goldstein, is an ultimate badass. Awesome woman character. She's like she's like Ripley. I mean, um, she's like a. Uh, can I put this? Vasquez is the uh, the more, for lack of a better word, cold badass as Rip, as, as opposed to Ripley, and, it, and that, I'm not saying that the. Vasquez is cold-hearted, meaning cold, meaning that she's just, like, always primed for war. She's shoot first, then shoot again later type thing. Like, she doesn't ask questions, and she just goes in there and... And then you got her partner, Drake, who played by Mark Ralston. He's also... And he and Vasquez had, like, this team had, like, this team camaraderie thing going on. It's like, um... They got a very, uh, their their relationships that to me is actually very interesting because like you can play it off as they're like very close friends or if there's something underneath that is brewing up. And the same thing can go to uh, Ripley and Hicks because the way that's played is like, like, you can play that as like a a subtle romance playing between Ripley and Hicks also, which I thought was really well done. Like a lot of the character relationships in this movie were well written because James Cameron is so good at doing that. Well, early James Cameron was really good at doing that back in the day. So he's able to like make these like multitude of uh, stories out of these relationships, and you can interpret them in it, and you can interpret it in any other way, which is great, and helps make the characters feel more real, more fleshed out. And now we get to the nitty gritty, the aliens themselves, and well, the first movie had one alien. This one has many aliens, and it's glorious. And I mean, like the action. This movie is like in your face. It's it's raw. It's so much fun to watch seeing the aliens and the Marines duke it out in all glory. Uh, special effects by Stan Winston on point. Stan Winston is a genius, legendary special effects artist. He did Terminator, he did Jurassic Park. Stan Lee was a genius. And his effects in this movie really show because as we get to the end, we see the ultimate of ultimate badasses, the Queen Alien, and she looks awesome and the fight that her and ripley have at the end is great with ripley spouting out that classic line stay uh get away from her you bitch and they just duke it out and it's great side note another character that i like a lot in this movie is lance hendrickson playing bishop bishop for those of you who saw the who saw the first alien there was an android in that movie, Ash, and you find out Ash was a, was a piece of shit, scumbag, who was willing to kill the crew for the embryo. Well, then you got Bishop, who is a good android, and he says in his scene that he is incapable of causing harm to humans, and he does not cause harm to these people. Like, he's interested by these things, but he's not willing to sacrifice the crew to protect it. He's willing, he's, he's put, he puts the crew first. And will not pay no mind to nothing else. So, and Lance Hendrickson plays him with a lot of heart. And Bishop comes across as like this, like, kind-hearted, soft-spoken type person. But it's Lance Hendrickson. So he has, like, he, so he sounds more like a badass. Because Lance Hendrickson has, like, that, uh, got, like, a badass type of vibe to him. And Bishop kind of comes across like something like that. It was mostly because of the voice. But, um. But yeah, Bishop is cool. I like Bishop a lot, especially at the end where, and throughout the course of the movie, Ripley and Bishop have like an uneasy, like Ripley, justifiably so, is very uneasy about Bishop. But as the movie progresses, she slowly starts to gain respect for him. And it happens more at the end. And, you know, their relation, and, you know, they start to form like a little, like, level of respect on friendship growing there. And that's good too. Well, <clears throat> anyway, that's all I wanted to say about this. Uh, I love this movie. It's great. I'm a huge James Cameron fan. This is one of my favorite James Cameron movies. One of my favorite sequels. Uh, Directing, writing, fantastic. The casting is perfect. Story is great. The character relationships are very fleshed out and very detailed. 
You can interpret it in many in a multitude of ways. Special effects are on point. The fights are great. I can't really say that much about this movie because <laughs> it's, it's just really good. I give it a solid 9.5 out of 10. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I am AJ Legend. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you again next time.